Good morning, everybody. You are back live with the crew. No, you're not live. Why do I keep saying that? Anyway, you're live. Hopefully, we're all good and live today. Today, as you can probably see in the title, um, and as you can see, you know, she's back. And yeah, it's a little gloomy and rainy out there. It's good. We need it. We've had a lot of rain, but it's good to have more. <laughs> you know, not building an ark yet, but you know, it keeps raining. It's a good thing. Today's video is really about uh, government and what what I feel is uh, everybody's favorite thing to complain about. <laughs> we we no matter what side you're on or don't even like government, we all got something to complain about with our government. They do a lot of really good things. They try. They try and keep everybody safe. I know it's in their heart. However, the way they go about things sometimes is just like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> like, that's a all, new all-time low. But <clears throat> anyway, today it re refers to crypto. And one of the things I talk about so much on this show, and it's so important to you and I, and they don't seem to get, is how important crypto is to their future. You know, Miss Warren and Mr. Buffett and all these people are so, like, they're older than I am, for God's sakes. And they're, like, telling people what the future is. You can't base the future of te uh, on current today's technology. People try all the time. Oh, well, we know where the world's going to be because this is the yardstick and the parameters in which we have to go by. So we know what the future is going to be. It's never like that. Never like that. Um, one of my favorite uh, uh, tech guys uh, a couple of years ago mentioned uh, Jeff Booth. I don't know if you know who he is. I talk about him on this show. He uh, wrote a really good book, The Price of Tomorrow. He, he pointed out that technology doubles, okay? Not technology. Information, the storage and the computing power of the internet and tech doubles about every 18 months. If you can just wrap your head around that, how can you say as a senator or someone else that you know what's going to happen when all the information and tech that we have today is going to double in, eight to, in a year and a half within two years? There's no way. You can't even write a bill that's going to be like it. Anyway, now I'm babbling on about that. I want to talk about the SEC, everybody's favorite complaint department. They've lost their minds. They're... Let me, let me go into this rant appropriately. Sorry about the shaking camera. Um, the SEC is basing their governance on, we will penalize you until you conform. However, they're not explaining what we need to conform to, or what the parameters are, or, or what... What is it you're trying to achieve? Do you have a goal for crypto? Do you have a perspective? Do you even have a, uh, an outline as to where you would like to see it go? You won't even reply to the companies that are asking for ruling on things. Isn't it interesting that they can't even rule or decide what something is, yet they know it's a security? They, and yet, we don't really know how to rule on something, but we know that you're doing something wrong. How do you know somebody's doing wrong if there is a rule? I mean, I don't, you know, this, the ridiculousness of it all is beyond understanding. They clearly are shooting from the hip. They're clearly just trying to enforce things. And they're just, I really believe, I, this hit me the other day. I think they're just trying to get gain some profits by fining all these companies because there's no they know there's no profit in crypto. Like nobody's making any money at it. Right? The transaction fees are zero for Wall Street. And they know it. This is just a concept, a thought I had, and it's like, well, we'll just fine them and we won't tell them what the rules are. We'll just fine them every couple of years and we'll get our 30 and 50 million that way instead of, you know. What it's crazy. 
So when I hear politicians, okay, all of them who are basically uninformed, I, I just sit back and I smile and I laugh like I know many of us do. And I just say, well, you may or may not currently own crypto, but you will. You can either own it today at today's price or you can own it the price it'll be five years from now. Good luck with that. That's probably not going to work out so well for you. Because, see, the whole world is grasping what's going on with the financial network, the dinosaur that it is, and it's being consumed by technology. The technology that I was just talking about that doubles every year and a half. And I've talked, my son and I talk about this, we did a video on it uh, a long time ago about the only thing the banks have ever created was a debit card. Think about that. In over a hundred years, they've had, they came up with a debit card, which already is somewhat archaic at this point. These people who are trying to figure this out, instead of coming to people in organizations like the ones that you and I know and the people that we support and the tech that is growing around them, they're holding, suppressing that and holding that down and keeping that information from themselves in hopes the fact that it won't ruin the rest of their lives, which is it's going to do. It's, it's going to put these people in a place of, hey, weren't you the person that said it's sort of like Janet Yellen. Wouldn't, weren't you the person in 2018 that said well, we would never have a recession ever again? Weren't you that person? Look how much credibility she's lost. Do you really want to be a, a, somebody in our, our government that is writing bills and passing laws about crypto and stuff that you don't even know what you're talking about and you're trying to suppress something that is inevitable? inevitable? happening is coming this is coming this is a global experience today i was just listening to a great show that i listen to occasionally and uh he was talking about um germany has has got a new banking network to where it, unfortunately it's only bitcoin and ethereum at this point but it will be offered easily one click type stuff in 8,000 banks, Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now, I don't know how many banks are in Germany, but it can't be too many more than 8,000, right? I heard a stat not long ago, there's 250,000 banks total in, uh, in the world. So, I would imagine that's about every bank in Germany you're going to be able to buy uh, those two uh, crypto anytime, well, while the bank's open. And through your online banking, I'm sure. This brings me to the dollar. People, nothing like having pets around and hairs flying around. Yeah, we'll just edit that part. No, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> so <clears throat> well, that brings me to back to the dollar and what they don't understand, how blessed they are as these people who run our nation at this point. Thankfully, the yuan is based, it's pegged by the dollar. Okay? The BRICS nation and money isn't changing to the yuan anytime soon. I know that's what we all hear right now, but it's pegged to the dollar. It's going to take an awful lot for that to unpeg itself from the dollar, because in doing so, you're going to cut off massive markets. And you're going to cut off massive markets simply just to the U.S. And the financial ramifications of that are so immense, it's beyond this show's capability to even explain it to you. But let's just say that the credibility of eliminating a perfectly good trade avenue is senseless. Why? Why would they do that? Nobody wants that to occur. Nobody wants that to occur because they have big plans. They see a future. 
Russia even sees a big future for, for crypto. But let's talk about what's going on with China and the Yuan and why they want to keep that avenue open. Look what's going on in Hong Kong. I just heard an interview with a guy who just got back from Hong Kong and they are absolutely giddy up to here about what's going to happen there and who's going to prof profit and the prosperity that it's going to bring to a dead, I shouldn't say dead, but Hong Kong really got obliterated in 2020 because of what we know. And it was slowing down prior to that because of the financial institutions that were leaving because of, you know, let's face facts, there was constraints put upon them uh, that hadn't been there when they first opened a Hong Kong up to the banking mecca that it is. It now has a new toy. It has new technology. It has all of crypto. Now, I know they're only starting with the first 10, I believe. Um, and I can't get anybody to tell me whether or not XRP is in that. If you know, put that down below. I haven't heard that they're going to June 1. I've heard that they were only going to use Bitcoin and Ethereum Litecoin for sure to start. Anyway, I don't know that for sure, but you guys can post that down below and I'll, then I'll be more educated. They are missing... These, our politicians are missing what people are in Germany banking are understanding, that people in Hong Kong understand. These people are chomping at the bit to try and get themselves involved in this technology that's headed our way. It's inevitable and they know it. And it is prosperity. It's employment. It's job creation. Let's even go down their narrative, which is green job creation. Think about that. They're stifling an industry that is green. That let's just back up the truck a little bit and, and ask ourselves, what are the two most prof profitable industries over the last 20 years of our lives? I would have to say Silicon Valley technology. OK. And I would have to say finances. Well, what does crypto do? Crypto adds those two together in a beautiful, decentralized, hopefully, package in which everybody globally can get behind because it's not associated with a nation. If that doesn't make your mind explode, you're going to take the two most profitable industries and create a new, brand new industry that everybody in the world can get behind? Like, I'm sorry if you're 80 years old and you're in the Senate and you can't figure that out. But that is prosperity. That is job creation. That, that is taxation for you, which you people seem to really appreciate. That is nothing but opportunity for the U.S. dollar who is being battered about globally by everybody talking about gold and BRICS nations and, and the Yuan, let's remember crypto is completely pegged to the dollar. Everybody associates, I know, I know I'm talking from America here, but everybody associates the value of Bitcoin with the value of a dollar. That's You've been gifted that. You were looking a gift horse in the mouth and you're throwing the horse away. You have this massive opportunity and you can't see it. You, you're denying it because, I don't know, maybe a few of these lobbyists have taken you to lunch lately or you're golfed out last weekend or what. I don't know. But you have to ask yourself, is the money worth it to you? Are you really being paid enough to be the fool? To, to not see prosperity for mankind? Is it really enough for you to be paid by those lobbyists? Do you sleep well at night with that? How is it that you can do that to your fellow man? 
I'm begging you to reconsider. I'm begging you to find a way to not be manipulated by the other senators and the Congress people in the room who are just bought out, sold out. They're going to lose. Like I said, it's a matter of when, not if. It's a matter of when. And it's global. Man, those lights are bright this morning. Holy smokes. <laughs> now, I'm ranting. Now I've gone preacher mode on it. But I really, how can you tax us? How can you tax us on capital gains on this product and then do everything possibly in your legislation and your legal terms? Of, oh, you won't. Oh, you won't tell us what the guidelines and the rules are. Simply just fine us. How do you represent us and tax us? How do you do that? How do you sleep? It's annoying. You, you need to ask anybody watching this video just the simple question. Does it just mean getting rich for everybody in the world? No. No, it doesn't. It means changing the world. It means changing the banking monopoly, monopolies that have dominated who succeeds and who loses on this planet. Who gets the loan? Who can't get a loan? Who gets a bank account? Why? Why is it the only people who get banks, bank loans, are the people that don't really need them? Why is it the people that really need the loan or need prosperity or need the help or need the helping hand that a loan could change their lives can't qualify and don't get them? Crypto's looking to eliminate that tyranny on the face of this planet. It's going to happen with or without you. And I understand why you want to slow it down. And I do understand the threat that you're under. And I know why that it must not be easy to come up with new reasons of how it's, oh, well, only criminals use it when it's on a blockchain. When Why would a criminal ever use that? And how do you look the American people in the eye and tell them that? In particular, when the American people, there's 20% of Americans now own a, some form of cryptocurrency. Boy, that's got to be a tough one. One thing I heard many years ago was when something comes to about 40, 45%, they'll vote for it. They'll switch. They'll flip. And I believe it was when 45% of the people in the U.S. wanted legalization of marijuana. They legalized it in certain areas. <clears throat> so, I don't know. Maybe then. Maybe only then. I don't know. Banking monopolies being what they are. It was just a story that I wanted to go over because I'm so passionate for you and I about what we know, about where it's going. And sometimes our families don't hear it, as we all know, but it's coming. I know it's coming. They know it's coming. We are the leading edge of why it's coming. And one day, it's just going to be everyday common knowledge. And, well, that day isn't coming soon enough, but it is coming because I can feel it, I can sense it, and I know it. And, oh, <clears throat> before I go, I have great news. I booked it. I'm going to Vegas. I'll be there May 5th and 6th and the 7th. No, I'm leaving on the 7th. On uh, May 5th, I'm going to be... Uh, now, maybe I shouldn't give that out completely, but if you want to know where I'm going to be uh, on Friday, the day before, okay, I'll be there and you can meet up with me. You can go to my site, uh, thestaplecrew.com, or, uh, yeah, that's the best way to get a hold of me. And you can find out where I'll be that Friday, and maybe we can meet up and maybe I can, uh, I don't know, have a drink with you guys. I don't drink alcohol anymore, but I love when people do around me, so it's really fun. So I appreciate it. So maybe I can buy you a drink. 
or if you're going to be there and if you're going to be there with time on your hands on Friday. So with that, guys, I am out. So years ago, you know, when our government thought of us as men and women, they used to call troops men. We have to send 10,000 men overseas. And then they called them troops. And then they call them boots on the ground. You have to ask yourself, do they respect you? Do they care about you as a man, as a woman? The proof's in their words and they mix their words always. You know, kind of like when you and I steal money from the business and we go to prison and they just call it, well, we misappropriated those funds. It's not really stealing. It's just been... Misappropriated.